Chronic wasting disease is a disease of deer, elk, and moose. And as far as we know, it's fatal in every animal that becomes infected with it. And it's really unusual because it's a disease that's caused by an abnormally shaped protein that infects the animal and then it eventually, after a period of time, will spread to the animal's brain where it will degrade the brain into kind of spongy holes and then that will cause the animal to show a bunch of uh, unusual behaviors like uh, excess salivation and poor balance and wasting, which is why they, they call it chronic wasting disease. And then eventually, very shortly after they start showing signs of the disease, they'll die. CWD seems to be spread in kind of two major ways. One is between animals, so when they come into contact with each other. So when, when deer in social groups contact each other kind of in a social way, when males fight during the rut um, and they're coming into nose-to-nose -nose contact, it seems like the disease can be transmitted directly from one animal to the next. The other way that uh, disease seems to be transmitted is through uh, contact with the environment that might be contaminated with prions. So prions, these abnormal proteins that cause the disease, get shed in saliva and in feces and in urine to some degree. And it seems like the animals can also become infected by contacting those uh, infectious materials. At this point, there is no evidence that chronic wasting disease can be spread to people. The concern about these, this group of diseases, chronic wasting disease falls into a group of prion diseases, some of which do affect people. And so there's concern that, that, that there is a potential risk. At this point, chronic wasting disease seems to not be very similar to the prions that, that people have, so it seems very unlikely that chronic wasting disease will affect people. But there are practices that as hunters and, and landowners you can engage in that will minimize your exposure to those, those infectious materials in an infected animal, which is really focusing on the meat, um, disposing of the lymph nodes and the spleen, and not eating an infected deer if you do end up harvesting one. There's no proven solution for controlling or getting rid of this disease. Some of the, the recommendations are for the hunter or the landowner or the farmer to, to minimize practices that are going to cause deer to congregate because we know that, that direct contact can cause transmission. So things like feeding deer um, could potentially increase those contact rates, which could increase transmission. Um, and then also there's concerns about the environment that those animals might be attracted to then might become places where the disease builds up and animals can come along later and become infected as well. Having your animals tested for disease that you, that you harvest um, so, that the, so we can know better where the disease is on the landscape and how much of it there is is important. And then following state and federal regulations about transportation of animals that you've harvested and proper disposal of those animals um, so, that, so that we don't cause the disease to spread further spatially than it already is. Mm -hmm.